The minister designate for the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Mr. Echos Pio Gabra, says Ghana already has very good trade and economic policies that should make the country financially and economically strong and stable, except that such good ideas have only been partially implemented. Mr. Spiel Gabra promised that if his nomination is approved, he would ensure that such good plans and policies work for the country. Mr. Spiel Gabra was answering questions from the appointment committee of Parliament during his vetting in Accra today. Mr. Ecos Gabra is a man of immense experience and expertise in various fields of endeavor, especially in communications. From September 2003 and 2011, he was the chief executive of the Commonwealth Telecommunication Organization based in London. Before then, he had worked in executive positions at the World Bank and the Agricultural Development Bank. A former ambassador to the United States and Mexico, Mr. Spiel Gabra has been a Minister of Communications and for Education, where he is certified for having set up the Ghana Education Trust Fund. He as well had an oversight role of the then Ministry of Mines and Energy in former President Rawlings' administration. The appointment committee, which vetted him, wanted to know how he would help the country correct a balance of trade deficit. Saying to some friendly MPs recently that since MPs, for example, are going to have a new block, the famous Job 600 block, hopefully ready for your occupation very soon, to what extent could I, if you bless me as your Minister of Trade and Industry, encourage you to ensure that we only use made in Ghana furniture in that particular block? <laughs> that is how you strengthen a currency. Well, I mean, it starts in such small ways. You know, protecting your currency doesn't have to be a huge, massive Bank of Ghana exercise. Every individual, by their own specific behavior, contributes to excessive demand for vehicles in our ports. Those, anybody who buys an apple being shown on the street is contributing to excessive demand for dollars to import those apples. Another question was on how he would help the youth or get them involved in agriculture. With a new 10 million CD institution that the president has launched yesterday, we are hopeful that young men and women, I believe there's allegedly a cut-off age of about 35, who want to start new businesses, will be able to access that particular um, funding source and be encouraged through mentorship, especially with much more experienced business people, to be more successful in business. I am also uh, a global ambassador for the Global Entrepreneurship Week, which tries every year in November to promote startup operations. But beyond the youth and entrepreneurship support scheme, which may have an age cutoff point, in terms of entrepreneurship, that is something that applies to all ages of the country. It's sometimes surprising for people to learn that the person who invented the famous Kentucky Fried Chicken did so when you're 69 years old. So it's never too old to be a business person or to be an entrepreneur. And my ministry, if you so bless me to assume this position, will be looking at all ages, not just young people, but of course youth and unemployment is very important to us. But even older people, some who are going to retire and who need encouragement and advice on how to establish productive businesses so that they don't retire and have nothing to do and, and die prematurely. The trade minister designate, who was emphatic about the need for Ghana to reduce importation and consume more of her own goods, also said he would engage with the Bank of Ghana on how to get the city appreciate in value. Mr. Spiogabra as well emphasized that he would like to bring back the operation feed yourself policy that was introduced in the 1970s to ensure food security and surplus for exports.